Hey, it's Matt. In this video, I want to talk about an interesting, quirky, funny concept about movement that I call the chaos. So let me explain. If you put your arms all the way out to the side, like this, even with your fingers pointed and your wrist straight, and maybe even with a bit of that as well, if you go into this area right here and you move around and your arms are really stretched out there, you probably feel a pretty gritty, yucky sensation all up here. And if you kind of like even move your neck at the same time, you probably feel pretty ugh in your neck. And it's just this horrible, chaotic, painful sensation and you can't really make any sense of it. It's just like this disgusting uh, feeling where you have very little control. And I call that the chaos. <laughs> now, it's very difficult to say, okay, what is it and what causes it? It'd be very simple to jump to some basic conclusion that's like, oh, well, that is a lack of flexibility. But Inflexibility is really like a result of things not working correctly. It's not like inflexibility is some cause of things. It's just, it's a result. It's like inflexibility is when you don't have the ability to move into, you know, different configurations of your body. So that doesn't cause things. If you want to look at an actual, like, you know, objective existence, things that actually exist and say, well, what's with them? What I suspect is going on is that the deeper muscle fibers are not working correctly. When you move around like this, it's just my understanding from what I've been told. I haven't been able to actually scientifically research this because it's so complicated, but I understand that when you just work like this, you know, just in your everyday life, very close to your body and not kind of out here, you use the surface layers of your muscle and they're very easy to use. They respond quickly. It's very easy to have coordination over them, but the, they're not as, let's say they're not as efficient and they're not as strong and they're not as, uh, let's say useful as the deeper layers. However, the deeper layers is kind of like where the magic happens. So when you go out here, I think that the deeper layers are required. Okay, so I wanna give you some ways to kind of like train that and improve it. I'm going to be relying on a couple of props here. One of these things, it's like, you might think I'm just gonna, this thing's like, oh, that's the thing that you just squeeze, right? Now I'm gonna do some other stuff with it. And I got the small weight here, not very heavy. Uh, before we go into that, I wanna just talk about something that happened yesterday, a little story that kind of prompted me to understand this to a bit of a deeper level. See, I've been doing boxing for, I don't know, two years or maybe even two and a half years. Not, not at a, you know, not super frequently, maybe like twice or three times a week maximum and on and off kind of. So I'm, I'm no professional or not, not even intermediate or anything like that. Just kind of like a decent above average beginner, I would say. And, you know, I'm reasonably fast. Like I can... I can be faster than most people that rock up at the, the typical classes that you find around the world. But there's this one guy here at, in Russia at, at a combat samba class, and he's just too fast. Like, it's just, he's just frustratingly fast. Like, I, I throw my fastest punches at him and he moves. And even when I'm standing, you know, out of range, he'll just leap forward and go bang and then bang and it's just like oh like and, and it's before i can even react it so fast so whenever you do boxing you, you want to increase your speed and you know sometimes you encounter opponent or a technique and you're like you learn how to do uh that technique and then you, you you level up your speed you match it but this one, it just took me so long. It's just like for weeks, uh, over a month of watching this guy, and I just couldn't figure out what is he doing to have such great speed. Well, luckily, he took me aside. He doesn't speak English, but he took me aside and he was like explaining what I'm doing wrong that uh, 
prevents me from having the same kind of speed as him, right? And it ties into what I'm talking about here, the concept, right? So, you know, he was explaining how when I'm striking, everything is a little bit too stiff, right? Like, like I'm, I'm like, you might look at that and think, okay, that's fast, right? Like it looks kind of fast, right? It, it seems reasonably fast, but he said that it's just too stiff to achieve the level of speed that he has achieved basically, right? So he was showing me how like to get that kind of, you know, fluid, like whoosh, fast movement, it has to be much more relaxed in the beginning, right? So one thing I always see Mayweather do is he, he holds this left hand down here, right? And then he goes whoosh, like this, like bang, and he just flicks it up, right? And what this guy showed me in boxing last night was very much like that. He was saying, you know, you have to be able to learn this thing, right? Like this, this motion here, okay? So it's not, it's where there's actually very little tension, like the shoulders, the delts, they're all kind of relaxed and yet you still get this to move. Now, what I noticed when I started to do that is that everything became very uncoordinated and I had very little control and it was kind of in the chaos, right? Like when I watched his movements and just repeated them, I was like, ah, oh, I, feel, I feel the chaos. I feel the chaos all through my hands, all through my arms and it's like, ugh, and it's uncoordinated and I just like, I don't have much strength in that range. And then I realized, okay, it's finally time to really take that training of, of the chaos to another level. So I started to do some things that uh, the trainer, I mean, I've done things before, but it's just uh, another level, right? So yeah. imagine that there's a table in front of me, okay? Like at the table, this height. So what you can do is stretch your arms out full length like this and rest them on the table in the chaos, right? So you're like, Ugh. it just feels like it's just pulled completely. And then, well, one thing you can do is just leave it there for a long time like 10 minutes, just relax, 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 and just stay there. And the other things you can do is you can kind of move like this. Okay. The other, another thing you can do is you can take your finger, take your hands slightly off the table so that the skin is still touching, but there's no weight on, right? So you're like just, just above and then you can start to slide your hands over the table, staying in this, you know, horrible, painful zone. Not too painful, you wanna keep it at just the range you're comfortable with and start to train that, all right? Now, of course, you can also do it in the air. So another thing is, just go, go out, reach out, so that it's like, ugh, like that, and just move like this. Okay, now there's all ranges that you can go into. Go behind and just keep that, right? Just keep moving in that zone. And you can at times if you want, involve your neck like that. You may find it good to relax your jaw like if you're like this. It's a bit stiff, but the point is you just keep it out there. You can also do it like this. The point is you just keep it out there and start to learn to move in the chaos. Okay. You can do reps like this and you're going to feel that it's like, it's much more difficult. Okay. You know, you see people at the gym and they get whatever, big weights, and they go, Hur! okay? 
that doesn't, all that does is give you bulk, right? It'll never give you like, put it this way, it'll never give you the type of muscle that you can use to throw a super fast punch that someone just goes, oh, how the hell did that happen? Like it, it won't do that, okay? So another cool thing is to use this. Now, when I bought this, I thought that the only purpose of it was to, okay, I'm increasing this, right? But another good thing is that you can actually bring it out into this zone, the chaos zone, and squeeze it so that you've actually got, now you've got everything kind of like engaged. And now you can do some circumduction, some circles like this, and you can just go through the whole range basically. You can also bend your wrist back, but you just keep that squeezed and it makes everything engage a bit more. You can try different wrist positions up here, down there. You can try it rotated like this. You can try it rotated like that, but you just keep it elongated. I usually do it with a, you know, a locked out elbow as well. Just move around, move around. Now, the weight. This is a 2.5 kilogram weight. You may or may not be absolutely shocked how much benefit you can get from a 2.5 kilogram weight that you don't really get from bigger weights. Like, you know, I've been doing this kind of like training where I just try to kind of improve the movement quality and efficiency of my muscles. And just doing that, when I finally decided that, hey, I'm not gonna try a muscle up, I just did a muscle up, or three muscle ups. On my, on my first attempt after not trying pull-ups or anything for so long, I, was, I just went and did a muscle up so easily because even though my muscles are not huge or anything like that, everything's just efficient. And the way the joints move and the direction is just so precise and correct for getting the maximum output from the energy available. So these lightweights can do a lot. That's my point there. Um, so put it all the way down at your side and let it, and uh, just hold it like this, by the way. Just don't even worry about your thumb at this, at this stage. Cause it's like, you can't kind of reach your thumb down when you let, your, when they let them hang down like that. And just feel that just going, oh, and see if you can get it to just go all the way up into here, okay? And then, just raise it a bit, like this. And just at that height, you're gonna get a lot done, okay? So when you do this kind of uh, training, you need to develop the entire range. See, most, as we've said before, most people just go like this. Or they just do this, or they just do this. Okay, that's, that's so garbage. <laughs> it's just garbage. So what Bruce Lee would do would, is pick up a weight and he would just move that weight around. So you just pick this up and let it, oh, I just feel like it's, oh, just like a waterfall down your, the top of your arm like that. And it's just constantly pulling and move around with that happening at the same time, okay? So that, that you're never trying to kind of like come into this comfortable range and just move it around like that, okay? Now, apart from this being a good improvement exercise, it's also something that can give you an idea of, you know, where are you at with the, the tension in your body? Because just say you try to do it and you're like, oh, no, it's too painful. It's too, oh, it's horrible. Like, I can't take that. I can't take that. Or like, you know, I gave the example before, why don't you put your hands on a table and just let them sit there for 10 minutes. Well, if you do it and like after 30 seconds, you're, you're kind of hands are numb or something like that. And you're just like, oh, this is terrible. Okay, well, that might be a good sign that something's pretty wrong. Um... I think that's all I want to say on it. Uh, you know, th this this concept that I'm talking to you, it's part of like, you know, my main approach, which is to get bad tension out of the body because the tension comes from 
let's just say the muscles stopping working, like you lose the conscious connection with your muscles. Some of the muscles shut down when you're just a child because you just don't use them. Some of them shut down when you become an office worker or a university student and you just stop using muscles or when you stop doing sport. Some of them shut down when you get a physical injury and then you don't want to go into a particular position that caused the injury. It can be anything like a, like a, like if you sprain your ankle or something like that and then forever you're kind of monitoring that and trying to not recreate the pain of that and then you shut down all these muscles in your hip and side and knee and everything like that. Or if you pull your back, then, then you stop bending over forever and then your back gets sore. Or it can happen from just emotional and social experiences where you just recoil away from things or you're, you're in a funny position when something emotional happens to you and then, then you never want to be in that position again or something like that. And anything can lead to you just stopping using the muscles and then they completely shut down. And then all you're left with is the ability to just move in this tiny little range and do things just here. And you lose all this wonderful ability that is open to you. And yeah, the concepts that I teach basically get you back in touch with that. If you want a full course on completely uh, building up your body from pain or complete inflexibility or just nothing really working or not efficient, it's just like you're just out of shape. I have a program called the Muscular Tension Release System. That's available on my website, mattcookmovement.com. The exact URL is mattcookmovement.com slash MTRS. You can pick that up. It's very good. It just like, it will get everything in your body working again. It's not about getting to a point where you can do gymnastics or martial arts or anything like that. It's just getting back from you know, everything being kind of like dysfunctional, completely average to a level where you're like, man, my body is just like, oh, just so good now. It's just wonderful. No specific athletic, wonderful, wonderful athletic performance or anything, but just like a fully functional, great body. Okay. Hope you like this one. Look out for more. I'll see you soon.